it's done. Yes, for this time, for this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well. We pay you for these? Can... Huh? We pay you for these? I think I've got you know, just make a, a Noetic Society donation or okay. something. We can't sell those Homer on Immortalities. We're oh. not allowed to sell them. Oh. Um, so give Pierre one of those copies of the Homer, will you? Just because I think might be interesting here. You might want you that. Want I think you might already have it, but the guy who wrote it pulled it from pulled it. He he won't let us sell it. He won't let Prometheus Trust sell that book. He doesn't. There's something in there that's wrong, but I don't know if it's a technical error. I think it's a. I think it's actually a content mistake. He probably it's probably probably positive. It's probably he probably, he probably saw too much, huh? He listened to the tapes and said, oh my God, I got to rewrite this. So, yeah, maybe so. He he may have listened to Pierre's videos and said, holy crap, have I got this wrong? Yeah. <laughs> he says, in 529 AD, Plato's Academy in Athens was closed by order of the church. After 900 years, and despite the massive contribution already made by Platonism to Christian theology, Christian God, who is also the God of the Old Testament, is a jealous God, at least in public. And who asked about the desk? Me or you? What desk? My desk in my office, which is still not clean. Mm. What kind of desk is it? It's modern. It's a very modern yeah. wood. We're, we're actually thinking of taking it apart and keeping it. Yeah. Shit. I know. <laughs> Why not? We have so much oh, room. This is nice. <laughs> Put it in your little cabin. But, yeah, we'll see. I think we will actually end up having a place to be. Who is this guy, Pierre? Do you know him? Um, no. He's so yeah. platonic and totally like. Yes, it's it's it's, uh, it's a very very uh, wow. Very profound work. Yeah, we're not allowed to sell it got really mad at me because I sold a few copies of it even after she said, oh, we'd rather you didn't sell that. And I said, Why? I'm looking for forward to I reading it. it off. <laughs> Did you get one? So then I heard from her back, oh, yeah, we're not supposed to sell that. I have enough on my plate. So Pacino started another platonic academy under Medici? So Gina, when you come over today to pick up the stuff, to show the yeah, so let's see what he's saying. For this jewelry is it, case pardon me, thing. Is, is that? Yeah, it's 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 is that the author? That big. It's about. Yeah. Uh, no. It's about this big. Oh, look. It's about this Pacino. wide. It's about that high. Read this. And it has the right. flip up top, and it has a place for right things in drawers, 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 drawers. Let's see if I have a better. Yeah, that's right. Platonism was the proof of Christianity? Well, it's big, but yeah. it's not. It oh, okay. fits in my, well, it fits in my yeah. I put it in my closet. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah well, I, I got it. It's really great. Little bath yeah, backwards, right? Little yeah, yeah. Jewelry. You know, it's really a Tell me what excites you about it. For, I put sewing Well, stuff I've never in there, read that you know, before in a threads book. and all kinds of stuff like that. You can, I've heard you say you it. You oh, okay, because... Yeah, I've heard you say it, but I've never seen it in a book. Uh, well, wow, that's because I read it. Woke up this you morning. More I read for Chino. Today. Yeah. Right. People don't read And so has this guy. So did this guy. And he's with Plato. Yeah. So therefore, so, so it's just very similar to your mind. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Read this paragraph. He sees Homer as a religion, okay, which is which is what it is. And you yeah, see yourself as Homeric. Days. Yeah. We got so much out of the ground. So That's Pierre, I, I, I'm, I'm, I had a question last night about why Homer, and you said it yourself at one point. Why Homer? Why, I was thinking, why Homer doesn't acknowledge a soul like the Hellenics mm. talk about? And then you said, is there a way to participate in the... I think it was last night you mentioned, how, then how would one participate in the brilliant light of being? No. If, what, what? if one dies, yeah. and in, in the context of death, it sets up a question, how could one participate oh, right. in the brilliant light of being, right. since right. whatever really hard on that is, of the, the is extent the after the moment of death See, see what this guy has does nothing, to me. has nothing substantial 
the, the, the empty shadow of an image or the empty image of a shadow <coughs> and no mind. There's no mind and there's an empty image which is just, you know, like you said, a story or... Um, uh, then how could a Homeric soul be anything like a Platonic soul? Right. Ooh. Yes. You got the problem. Ooh. Well, it'd be very difficult with the myth of Earth. I think he wants an answer. Yeah. <coughs> Mm. It seemed to change Hello, over welcome. a thousand years. Um, I'm going to pick a one to one. Yeah. I think so. Are we going to go after? Mm. So, um, yeah. Here it is. Down. All set? Maybe um, right the myth of Ur, Mr. Ur made a difference. What do you got, Pierre? Uh, I'd even settle for bits yeah. and pieces. <clears throat> so, so for the benefit of the people who just came in, is it possible to rephrase that? I don't even know how I phrased it. More first quickly? Uh, oh, more I had some trouble, but... Uh, it was well said. Go ahead. Restate it. Quite bluntly, um, given all that was said last night, how, it seems like a Homeric soul is quite different from a Hellenic soul. And... Um, uh, I, I, and, and so that in itself is important, but then the transition, how can we use Homer to help you know, what am I missing such that I think Homer and the Hellenics are different? And, and in the sense of Hellenism is Parmenides, you know, all those, you know, early thinkers. And Plato. I'll shut up now. Is the question somewhat semi clear? Yeah. So, she. <clears throat> I'm, I'm asking you, Julia, if you um, the standard of clarity. What does Achilles learn? What is the nature of the actor world for the death? I'll buy all of these. Wow. All right, don't get over Done! He, You've he, just paid for them. He went for a six pack. <laughs> he, he wanted the six Marvelous. Some people take the singles, he took the six pack. I'll see whether or not he covers it. All right? Oh. Okay. Because there's one more if you want to. <clears throat> um, That's your. If he does, I'll be very pleased. Oh, I'm so happy! Look at all those books disappeared, man. <laughs> oh, and I have bananas over here, courtesy of Nancy. And oh, the bananas nice. can be chopped up and frozen, and they're in a good place right now. Oh, good, I'll and take they're some not going to be good for long. Okay, so please take bananas. I forgot my cookies. Well, Russians are there all day today. You're welcome to go over. Um, I don't know when there's going to be some wacky things happening. It's going to be there or something. I can't guarantee you it will be there. I think you have all of them, Gina. But he's got it. He's, he, he's got it. If I don't, I'll give them to somebody else. He's got it. On page 72. This guy has He's done. <laughs> you have to crack those Therefore, open. I don't have to say anything. He does have it. He does. <laughs> He's got the answer. Can we read it? We don't have copies. I got them all. Now, is when, <laughs> now you know why I bought them all. <laughs> 70 what? Two. Oh. See, and the... In the uh, Odyssey, you, people have to, if they want to understand this question, they have to understand <clears throat> Odysseus's search in Hades. That's what I was thinking. Right? Because in that section, uh, there's a vital couple of lines. Because all the figures in Hades, we could say, the, the, the power of the pathologos is so intense, has such power, that upon death, 
in the Homeric view, that continues, that continues until it plays itself out. And that's Hades. There's no souls in Hades. Hades is just the image and the myth? Hades is the realm where your pathologos plays itself out until it diminishes its power and becomes fleeting and gone. That's the thesis of Homer on Hades. But <clears throat> there are two lines in there that are principal and, and most important. Hercules. Of course. I'm Hercules is the only one he mentions, Homer mentions, whose uh, we can call it the persona or the pathologos, is so strong that it endures in Hades, but he celebrates with the gods, with the banquet and the gods in the heavens, in the true heavens. So he's in both important. places? We need to see that guy. That's yeah, important. and that's in Homer, and therefore there has to be parallel to Homer a... a uh, uh, what shall we call it, uh, a firm belief in the myth of Her Heracles, yeah. who was the purifier of the psyche. Wow. That the Her Hercules? Heracles. Yeah, and yeah. I can tell you why. Yeah. That's another question. Um, so your question was not, your statement was not the brilliant light of being, but who would participate in a banquet of the gods? Now I That's right. That was your statement. That's right. And that was like, yeah. Yeah. Where, where's the so anybody who becomes... Herculean gains access to the heavens mm -hmm. and banquet with the gods. Yeah. Oh. And, and that, you know, that I've always enjoyed more than anything the heroes. Because Pardon me? More than anything in Greek mythology, the heroes. Because they act as an intermediary between that ancient classical, um, ancient pre classical. Um, they involve man's growth. They are the they are the personification of a man in growth. Like Hercules, he kills his music teacher uh, in a fit of anger, and then he kills. It, uh, Hera drives him to kill his family in a fit of anger. Yes. And then for twelve labors, he uh, he comes to terms somehow. With That's them. right. And so, having faced it in life and, and working through the consequences yeah. is a lot different from Phoenix or Achilles or Patroclus. Or Patroclus. They, they committed the crime and, and then had to run away and take refuge in another place. And they took that myth with them, that, that problem with them. They don't talk about atonement. In fact, it's pretty obvious that they gather those kinds of people around them, one, and That's they right. teach those kinds of teachings to their charges, That's right. too. That's right. And so the, the idea of, I don't know, murder yeah, hero. As, as the yeah. defining moment in whether a person is going to look at themselves yeah. is pretty, well, pretty important to the Greeks. Yeah. I mean, when it gets so out of hand that you start killing your friends, um, then you need to, uh, and that's why Theseus and Hercules are important. Not only do they address that themselves, but they also um, go around ridding mankind of all those kinds of images. That's Hercules of the monstrous and untenable, and Theseus of the human. Monstrous and human. Oh. And so, um, and that's the, the difference is if you look at Hercules, you've got all these monsters, and you look at Theseus, they're all these human characters. And so they rid the earth of all these yeah. irrational so, elements. Yeah, yeah. There had to be, therefore, people in that age, and just in what you said, who could deeply appreciate the role of Theseus in Plato's Phaedo, which is the key myth. Right. The role of the hero is central to Platonic thought. Yeah. Because Socrates is called the, the philosophical hero. He doesn't mention Her Hercules that much. Pardon me. Socrates doesn't mention. No, I'm sorry. This is a site. Good point. In terms, of, in terms of the myth, the only conclusion of the Theseus myth is that Socrates is the Socratic hero. 
that is a hero in the Greek sense, which you're just now mentioning. Well, part of the hero is to be able to go to the underworld and return. Yeah. yeah. So I'm willing to. I'm willing to put these on the table, and anyone who doesn't get one, I'll take them home. I think you're. <laughs> Fair enough. That's fine. Barbara, these are books that we can't sell. Right. The, the publisher pulled the books, and uh, oh, Pierre is very fascinated to find out that they're actually quite good. <laughs> so we no, don't, I don't. We don't no, know. Well, I, I bought them all from. She from <laughs> he took them all. It's funny. So therefore, can I'm I, offering can them. Can I buy them at the same price? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yes. There's a little tax, but that's. that's oh, it's Prometheus Trust. I thought yeah. I got one. the publisher Prometheus Trust pulled them. Julie. What are you yes. sending back there for? Uh -huh. They're not allowed to Did, did, did they say there. give a Y or did they just say Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. <laughs> That's <Here>. pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting back to you. <laughs> but I want to read it, but she's right. reading today. What she doesn't believe is if she comes back in a half a year or something, that we're all going to still be sitting here. Yes, I and do. And that's what's going to happen. I hope so. I hope so. I still I very much expect that. I very much am depending on it. I hope. Yay. <laughs> there you go. Page 72. Oh gosh, remember oh. we did the Cave of the Nymphs? That was just the, ah! one of the greatest things. <laughs> uh. Did you tell Pia the project you have Yanni working on? No. That, it's kind of, everybody would probably be interested. Oh. Oh, I asked uh, I asked Johnny to put together a list of all of the Parmenides talks from the very beginning with the links. I suspect he's not with you. Do you suspect the same? Um. What did he say? Pardon me, I wasn't. Barbara was. I, I I asked Johnny to do me a favor to put together all of the Parmenides talks, the links to all of them from the very beginning so that I could see them during my trip, so I could go back and do some of the early ones, but also Lazarus was very interested in trying to follow along with us and go back to the beginning. So Yanni has agreed to do that, and when he, when he has completed that task, I will share it or he, have him share it with everyone so that it, you can all go back to the very beginning. I, I wouldn't do it. Oh, why not? It's not finished. Well, you. Well, we can keep adding to it. Here, right? Oh yeah, wait a second. Wait a second. It's done. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're gonna go by these rules. Yeah. Well, but at one point I had asked you, Barbara, but I didn't really suggest to Pierre yet about. I, I know you guys work from what November of. We're gonna go on these Pierre rules. Field? Done. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the date. Cave of the mind. This was the. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, see 2003, the print. it was done. Oh. I just want you to know. <laughs> see the, no, no. See, the, the problem is. Done. I hear what you're saying. The, the problem is, I. I, I perhaps don't like you. Really I go back and read it. it. Yes. I hear what you're saying. Tina has some that I don't have. They're not very many. Hmm. You go back and read that, it? That, that's, a, uh, that's an ancient problem with me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever read anything I wrote that I didn't change after I read. <laughs> you have to give it up finally. You know? But this is a new age where you can make changes all the time. So this is a great age for people like me. Right. I think it's really good, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm not. Uh, well, he's got it. He's got her. He's got her you know, yeah. in a very fine way. What Beautiful. Page? Uh, what page? Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's got Homer. He told me. Oh, no, you could write your family just to and ask them. Oh. <coughs> they told us not to sell it, so we pulled it off the shelves after I sold a few more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> I was a little persnickety about that one, but. Yeah, they didn't offer to give me my money back, by the way. They just said, oh, really? Yeah. Well, 
What's what, what was that offhand comment? Did you ask them? You didn't offer to give her her money back. I just said she couldn't sell them. Punishments. I've taken her to task a few times over stuff like that. I, Oh, is this, this is, uh, April Eddie. Charming woman. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can tell by her emails. I can tell by our dialogue that we've had over the years. She's a real piece of work. Oh, she is. Yeah. Sorry on the tape. <laughs> but she's a real piece of work. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> the daughter of the, or the wife. No, no the, the wife, wife of Tim Eddie. Yeah, this is a damn good book, boy. This is a damn good book. She's actually a hard worker. But is this guy still alive? Or did he die? No, I think he's still here. Here? No, I'm Roger. just joking. Roger Swarter, I think he's still alive and kicking. Where is he? England or U.S.? University of Oxford, it says on the bag. Not a bad place to Well, that's where we took this degree. But, uh, a member of the team of lecturers which provide... He was at Australia, too. In Bendigo, where's that? Department of Arts at La Trobe University, ben, Bendigo. He lives in Australia, sounds, okay. That sounds like Australia. Bendigo. Right. Oh, Victoria. Yeah, this is... Yeah, Isn't it interesting that they that they thought it was an interpolation? Oh yeah, by yeah. Athenian. Yeah, maybe Athenian yeah. put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Page seventy-three. There's that great line in there about uh, how this very quote on Hercules had been cut out by many of the Greeks, and it was put back in, and there was a war over this quote about the role of Heracles and Homer. Yeah. yeah, he's he's got that on seventy three, I think. Mm. They're like five lines from the top. Here is the the connection between visiting Hades while still alive and a continued existence after death amongst the gods. The two lines describing Heracles in his post-mortem bliss among the gods were often ad uh, omitted by ancient critics. They were suspected of being an interpolation by Homer's Athenian editor, Omancritus, in the 5th century BC. Certainly the post Mortem survival of Heracles as something more than a ghost seems alien to the beliefs expressed in the Iliad and the Odyssey. But these lines fit perfectly into the reading of the Odyssey, which takes Odysseus's travels as symbolic of the path to immortality. Right? <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> <laughs> you could have used that reference to the Iliad that you pointed out last night, where no, I, Achilles, I, Achilles in the, uh, has the dream of uh, Patroclus and he calls him a ghost, uh, an image of used up men. Maybe he does. Well, he says it's something more, than, certainly the post-mortem survival of Heracles is something more than a ghost seems alien to the beliefs expressed in the Iliad and Odyssey. But there is that quote that we read last night in the Iliad, which would support such a claim. Maybe that's what it's yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a key point in my uh, Return of the Gods. The way up and the way down are the same.
Yeah, interesting. Good bug. Uh, what do you mean by the way up and the way down is the same? Exactly what he says. <coughs> but, See? Well, uh, is it the same? A pathologist is is um, um, is it's nothing other than uh, conditioned enlightenment. That's all it is. Conditional enlightenment. Yeah, conditioned, conditioned. conditioned. Yeah. yeah. You have to be in an open mind to have the introduction of the pathologos. <clears throat> you have to see the authorities as symbols of the highest virtues. You have to see yourself as being exceptional, being shared into the, in the divine secret. It brings order. You begin to understand everything around you in the family. And it only follows that vi the, the image of vice is virtue. Hmm. The image of Therefore, virtue is vice. Uh, the way up or the way down are the same. The only, there's only a modest difference. One's real, what's on. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's one of those modest differences. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a difference. <laughs> It sounds like what you're saying is that the, the state of mind is the same, but something enters in to put conditions on that state of mind. And an unconditioned state of mind wouldn't be emptiness, but all of those things without the illusion are the... It would be the thing, those things themselves and not the um, images of them that we interpret as the things themselves. It's all right. And the images of the things that we interpret as yeah. the things themselves are the things that we... Um, um, the things that... Uh, Well, it's kind of nice that you have an idea of enlightenment. Sure. It'd be nice to talk about that. I, I lost the other track, but it seems like what you're saying in the Path of Logos is already established as the criteria for enlightenment. You, and I like that. You, in one way, uh, you have to explain why is it that people accept the pathologos. Yeah. What is the condition for accepting the pathologos? What is it about mankind that he is susceptible to this? That's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. Right. What What is the What is the And that, that is that. Uh, uh, and and most importantly, what is it about? mankind and the, playing the role of parents or authorities, they have to be so perceptive to know when to introduce it. Like, why is it that, from what we know, they have to wait for a bunch of conditions to be present? A bunch of what? Conditions. Conditions, right? Like, it can't, it can't occur, it, you, you can't have a new one, uh, in terms of time, uh, uh, it, it, I wouldn't put a date on it, but no pathologist is introduced when someone is in post, uh, let it, pardon me, uh, high school, period. Of all the pathologists you've ever seen discussed, when did they come in? The earliest, about two and a half, Right? And that tends to be more symbolic. The big shock comes when they go into pu to public school, the first, the first class. They see a new reality. 
That's when we can see it emerge during the six, seven, eight, nine, right? Maybe below, but that's because they've been introduced to socialism as kind of a socialization. So a parent has to be able to say, ah, that kid's in the good state for me to pop it on them. Ha ha! They have to see that the child is open and receptive and willing to accept it. The kid has to be in a very open and pure state of mind. No pathologus has ever brought into existence where the event can be justified by some violation. It's always a fiction. It's always false. They have to make the false appear true. They have to make, they have to make something that appears to be so inconsequential that it's a life and death issue. How do they do that? Right? They have to create in their actions and their behavior and their way of being a way of communicating that if you do not accept this, you're out of the house and you're, you're exiled, period. You're dead. Yeah. It has to have that kind of authenticity. Well, what's that parallel to? I mean, their whole psyche has changed, is it not? That's why there's childhood amnesia. Because after that, you say, hey, everything that came before is a lot of bullshit. Can't count compared to this divine revelation I'm getting. That's the way it seems. I'm now a member of the family. I now see my parents as demigods. Right, I'm now in a religious community called the Pathologos. It's religious. The introduction of Pathologos is a religious act. Binding? Woo! Well, that's what Ray a learning? Means. Oh, what learning? Religio needs to bind. I know. Cannot be questioned, it's indubitably true. You walk away and you realize everything that came before couldn't compare in, in value and importance compared to what has now been introduced to you. It's a conversion experience. So if you understand pathologies, you understand enlightenment. Same thing as enlightenment. You have to drop everything. Right? Just like the kid, he drops everything, he's open and free, he forgot everything, now he's open, he's susceptible. He then discovers something that changes the person from that point on. He realizes there's some kind of reality that he never touched before. He can now, if he has the courage, and of itself, and, but it needs something. What does it need? Practice. No enlightenment experience is worth the damn if the person doesn't continue practicing. What, what is the substitute for that in the pathologos? Um, daydreams. Oh. Daydreams. <coughs> daydreams is the continuing, continual reinforcement of the pathologos. If you have a daydream, then you know the kernel of your pathologos. If you've seen through all the pathologos, then you're no longer subject to its continuation. Yeah. Well, it's the altar upon which we sacrifice our being. Altar on which we sacrifice our... The pathologos is the altar on which we sacrifice our being. That's why people have pathologos don't have any mind. <laughs> They're in the realm of the fourth hypothesis. I know. <coughs> Which I still haven't talked to you about. They're ended. All believers end the fourth hypothesis flattened out. They can't question the pathologos. They don't know how to question it. They're afraid to question it. They realize if they ever do question it, everything is going to pass, and they may not ever be able to go home again. And that's Odysseus. 
What do you have to do if you've had an insight? <coughs> what happens when you go home? What is Ithaca? Ithaca's going home. What do you find? Chaos. What are you going to do with the chaos you find? That's the Odyssey. Whoa. Magnificently portrayed. So it doesn't make any difference you're talking about a path logs, you're talking about enlightenment. Either way, same dynamics. Relation to constant, the terms change. <coughs> so being being constrained by Poseidon is a whole lot different from being constrained by Zeus. Yes. I'm sorry, I made that. Yeah, sure, I, sure, 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 sure. Because now Odysseus's homecoming is determined by Poseidon's will, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of a a bond. He's the earth shaker. You're you know, bound to the earth. I don't know. I'm just playing here. Um, but uh, it, it, yeah. I, I've always tried to figure out why Poseidon played such an important role. But I, yeah. So I have to throw that in. See, our age, we, we don't have any heroes. Absolutely none. We don't have any heroes. None we have billionaires. Not, we have crooks. Right? We have, we have thieves and crooks as our heroes. And what they're doing is destroying the earth. Exactly. I thought our heroes were those who drop out of school and then become a billionaire. Of course. Is that the model? Of course. Of course. <laughs> they are, hey, they are masterful meditators. Billionaires are meditators. They have to keep on their mind money. Money, I was just going to say. That. They have to be totally devoted to it. <clears throat> there has to be nothing that they're willing not to sacrifice to accomplish it. They can't even see what right? they're sacrificing. They are totally, they are total religious figures. They only have the wrong God. Right, they're masterful meditators. And therefore, these are the people we allow to destroy our earth. Mm -hmm. And the human race along with it. Because we can't touch their money. It's their money. It is like hell. Money doesn't belong to anybody. Bullshit. Yeah. Right? Money is something that has to be held in common, that flows. What they do is they create private reservoirs and, and the, the flow of money is, <laughs> is no longer possible. It trickles throughout the world with poverty is in its wake. It's damn. We allow that because you can't touch a man who's made his money. I mean, you have a, he has a right to have. No, he doesn't. He stole it. We have no sense of justice. <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have a guy who makes everybody pay a hundred dollars for, for uh, a word program. A uh, hundred dollars? More, yeah, how many? Hundreds of dollars. <coughs> yeah, we allow that. Huh. Mm -hmm. We allow him to end up with trillion dollars or however many billions the dude has. It's right. absurd. Or we pay 239 yeah. for uh, sugar right. water. Right, like. Yeah, that was a great idea. Let's make a box into which you can put everything, and then we control the key, and you have to pay to use the box, no matter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good trick. They've all been good tricks. Electricity is a good trick. Oh, yeah. The internet in general is a good trick. Put, put them all in a jail made of gold. <laughs> yeah, they'd be happy there, wouldn't They'll they? They'll be happy in their death. <laughs> yes. I let them eat off gold plates and write in solitude. Right? Yeah. yeah, use their gold. Yeah. And that's how they end their life. No friends, no companions, no place to talk, no place to have coffee. They're poverty stricken. 
They have to have private armies to protect themselves. They're criminals. Yeah. They're all mafia types. Oh yeah, I met them. I know them as well. Yeah. yeah. We allow it. What? Right? We allow. We allow. They live in Switzerland, or their money lives. In Switzerland? Right, the whole whole world is going to hell. <laughs> we have to. We have to allow these people. Yeah. Let's not touch their wealth. Their wealth. What is wealth? It's it's a dualistic god. For to increase, something has to decrease. Mm. And something for something to gain, something has to be lost or yeah. changed or transformed. Like, hey, they have to make uh, some yellow metal worth your life. Yeah. What? Mm. Yeah. A, a, a yellow metal they'll kill you for. What? It's just metal. Matter of fact, they'll kill a thousand, a million people for a metal, yellow metal. Now it's black too. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's absurd. And they'll destroy all the classical art while they're doing it. <laughs> the whole system is absurd. By the way, just as a footnote, there are a few great alternatives to word which are free. Yeah. The most Libre, famous Libre Office. alternatives Libre Office. to the word program that are free. There are word programs that are free, like the or, word program. And they're, they're developed communally, and yeah. one is, is particularly good called LibreOffice. I use it all the time. Yeah. It reads and writes word without paying a cent to that guy. Does it, does it save as a PDF? You can actually export the PDF using LibreOffice. Without charge? Without charge, yeah. They didn't go after <laughs> the uh, Adobe went after uh, Bill, but they didn't go after the free product. So yes, when you're in Libre Office, you can click on the PDF button. For you. <laughs> the only, the only, we only, mankind only has one question: Are you willing to act with reason or not? That's all. That's all. Either going to use the mind, or you lose it. <clears throat> right? It's a lot of fun. But is it possible, uh, if this is a place to learn, some place for learning? If this is a place for souls to learn. Yes, this is the place for the souls. This is the only place to learn. Isn't it, uh, isn't it? You have to have a body. Isn't it so good that it's, uh, in a way, that it's so fucked up around here? This is a great no, place no, no. to learn because it's so messed up. Hey. A, new, a, a curious race of people have come into existence and they only have one, one challenge. That is use the mind or not. That's all. If we can't, we'll be an extinct species. Or there'll be a new, a new class of human beings who, who can uh, risk knowing and using the mind. That's all. Well, is this Hades then? Pardon me? Is this Hades? Is this? Hades. Because the path No, no. Hades is... The only difference between Hades and this place is that while you're here, you're living your, ha your Hadic existence. But doesn't the pathologos yeah. fade yeah. while we're here? Yeah. And this is where you can you have the chance to overcoming it. And earlier you said that's what happened in Hades. Your pathologos would continues fade, fades away. It fades away. Yeah. It sounds like it's here, doesn't it? it? Sounds like Hades is right here and now, just like heaven is right yeah, here. Yeah, that's right. It's not not far yeah, away this is, at all. This is Hades, with an exception that here you can break through it. There you can't. And where's the there, Pierre? What's the there that you can't? Where, where? Hades. 
have the. It's not an actual. Plate. There's no mind there, therefore there's no learning in Hades. There's not no learning in Homer's view of Hades. Is that because he has a real core view of mankind that there are very few people who are worthy of banqueting with the gods, that most people are um, living uh, their pathologos. I don't know, he wouldn't say that. Most people are living their path. And that there are a few heroes which show the possibility, represent the possibility of liberation, but he's not going to put everybody in that. I mean, like the Buddhists, they say, unless you're a hero and you grab on right away, you're going to get reborn and the devil take the hindmost. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's kind of what Homer's saying, isn't yeah. it? He's saying, screw you guys, they're all yeah. just a, a, a story and a shade. And if you really want to have mind and be a hero, you're going to have to... If you want to play with, with the heroes, you're going to have to do something entirely different, which I'm not even going to discuss. Yeah, well, I see. The, the, the question is, is it possible that any parent can predict what kind of pathologos they will insert in the child? I don't think so. Or is it possible that in every case they never knew why they're doing what they're doing, have had absolutely no idea of its consequences, and in no way could have predicted the, the outcome of what they're doing to their child? Yeah, Wait, what, what does that mean? That means the formulation of the pathologos comes from the individual, not the parent. I've never seen two, two cases of pathologos that were the same. Never. They're always unique. Even among siblings? Every, oh, especially among siblings. <clears throat> among twins. Hmm. They end up with, with a, each comes out, each interprets whatever is going on in their own way. That means that interpretive uh, mechanism they brought with them. Therefore, uh, when you come to birth, you've already brought with you a pathologos. Or the condition. The condition for <laughs> its formulation, the situation occurs, and then you put, impose it upon it. Would that be uh, to the dismay or surprise of the parents, them not instilling a pathologist they wish start, <laughs> <laughs> that your pathologist was unique to you, yes. in spite of what your parents had intended? Of course. They just set up the conditions for you to impose it. When David's question is, will the parents be upset that you took the pathologos you took or will they will they hey, hey, try it ask them they'll be surprised as hell if you ever came to the conclusion you did they'd shed many a tear if you were to say hey let me tell you what what i learned from you they go oh shit you learned that from me they probably wouldn't recognize it because they have no idea what the child brought into existence yes. with them Though it's obvious, if you, my sister, she was a a, a nurse among uh, prenatals, right, early children, and uh, and she also was in regular uh, regular term, and she said one day we're having. A talk and she says you know when we nurses get together a group of us she says only a group of us we can detect a different personality in every one of the children wow. and every one of them they come out they already have it they have their own particular way of exhibiting what it is for them to be what they are I've seen that a couple of times in babies. right that's right. You can see it. I remember, I don't want to name any names, but a friend of ours who has a boy and a girl, I can remember the boy at three weeks having the same look he has yeah. today at I, 15. Uh, yeah. I was present at my, uh, my daughter Aaliyah's birth. 
it will never forget it. It was magnificent. And <clears throat> I saw her, her grandmother, Nancy's mother, coming down the, the hallway, and there was a screen. Behind the screen was the doctors now bringing the child to birth. You could see it. See. I saw what was going on. I, tr I quickly said, hey, let's go get a cup of coffee. I didn't want her to see it. Why? The child was furious. She was furious that she was being born. She was cursing that doctor. In what language? I don't know. But man, she was saying, you're a son of a bitch. I don't want to be born. I mean, she was a total fury. It was magnificent. I never saw a child with such beautiful fury in my life. I mean, it was really worthwhile. I was very, I, I, unfortunately, it was, I had to keep the grandmother from saying it. But it was a great show. I mean, looking right at her, and out it came. I said, that's a magnificent appearance. What did you think her huh? grandmother's reaction wanna, would be? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm not really quite sure why I, I should have perhaps let her be there. And it was maybe unfortunate that I blocked it. Hmm. But she had the view of uh, politeness. and. Mm. Mm. So she would have spotted that baby right off. Yeah. I, I, if I were to do it again, <laughs> yeah. I would have invited her to sit down and Doctor have a chair while watching it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not polite. You, you frown. Yeah. So, but so good. Well, for, politeness. Good for you. Good politeness is a disease. I know many people that were polite. They Pierre, lost their mind. Pierre, don't you mean? Welcome to my world. Reuse the mind, because uh, it seems that the mind necessitate. It's it is necessary for the mind to have the, this kind of structure, pathologous frame of mind, or whatever you want to call it. Of course. So. Right. So, so we use the mind, and we have this paraphernalia that goes along with it, but, but what we really need to do is reuse the mind. We need to get rid of that and, and come up with a new way of, of no, no, new structure. See, it's because we accepted the appearance and not the reality. Why is it that a pantologos only takes place before the child enters into the realm of reason? That's the point. Once a child, that's why you'll never find a pathologist where any parent is inflicting some kind of pain on the child. Because the kid will get mad. No pathologist. No violence in any pathologist scene. Yeah. No violence. It has to look natural and you have to be bewildered. You can't, it, it, it has to be before the age of reason. That's why no child gets a new one during high school or the later years, maybe after the fourth grade. They don't get any new ones. It has to be before they can question, before they reach reasoning. It's therefore, it's a pre-rational introduction of enlightenment. I mean, are we doomed to uh, play this thing out over and over again? Hey, let's, uh, see, but we have to appreciate what it is to have a mind. And thank goodness we finally have someone who's writing a book on it. Mm -hmm. oh. Did you know that? Who? Julie. Julie. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Great. So. Pierre, if, if the pathologo gets transferred when the parent is, is nice and kind, can it also get transferred when they're mean or angry? If they, what? If they transfer if the parents, what follows? You uh, can you explain that? Can a pathologo be passed when the parents are angry and, in, you know, riled up? No, because because then you understand there's something you don't understand. They got angry 
right? That's not going to produce the pathologos until you discover uh, earlier in life what produces that. They're doing it for you. They're getting angry for you. That condition already has to be established before you get a pathologos. For your sake. Yeah. Like any kid, right? If he had turned to his parents when they blew up and got mad, angry, said, hey, uh, let's talk about it, Mom. <laughs> yes. Well, why do you laugh? Because, come on. Yeah, what would your parents have said? Uh, He'd say, hey, come on, let's talk about this. You don't have the mind for it yet. Oh, oh right, for, that, for the kid to do yeah, that. You don't, you don't have the mind for it. Not only that, my parents would have gone, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in control here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anger is a gift then, Pierre. Anger then would be a gift in that sense. So if you look at that, it would be valuable whenever you're angry to see what the problem is or see what's going on in that moment. Yeah, like it's misinterpreted that anger, like when you're getting somebody angry at you that is viewed as like he did something wrong, like it's negative. When it's actually the person is really being honest with you that and they're showing their true self. Well, maybe not true self, but at least maybe they're being But honest. there's some injustice somewhere in that anger. Where it is is See, they want you to conclude something about their anger. You already have to have a learned response to their anger. It can't be the beginning of it. You know already when that look comes over your mother's face, you know uh -oh. what that means. You know you better, better run for the hills or... That's right. Or go, yes ma'am, you know, whatever it is. It already has to be in place. Well... Does it have to be a private scene? Hmm? Private. Does it have to be a private scene? How about a mm. one? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Because if others were around, oh. they'd stop it. Oh, they'd stop it. They'd so, say, what the hell are you doing? So if that's the case, <laughs> our societies or cultures which uh, live communally pass oh. on less pathologoses because there's always older adults around who are going to stop oh, it? That's right. That's why in, in uh, we, what you might call, might call traditional uh, societies, the kind of pathologos is different. Like we live in an absurd world where we put a family in a cell and that's the only world in which the child can live in that cell. Occasionally they take them for walks here and there, but they live in a cell. No parents, no grandparents, no extended family. Where in some t today's extended families are around. Hey, you do that in front of your grandmother, you got to risk maybe grandfather going to say, hey, knock it off. That's right. Our culture is to segregate, separate, keep them from an extended family. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we. And it, by the way, the extended family has to be more than one of the parents' is family. Yeah. 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 Because if, it, if it's if it patrilineal, then you're going to have this some continuity of one kind of pathologist have them both. Then it's a compromise. More compromise is the less effective. So that explains why one of my grandparents were not allowed in the house and the other yes, were. Yes, that's right. Wow. That's right. I don't want him around my kid. Why? Yeah. Be You'll get a different fun. reality? That's right, my family too. That's right. They were, they were the fun ones. The drummer in a strip club and a, <laughs> a nurse, you know. That was, that was my dad's father. He wasn't allowed around. My mother said no. See, there it is. He would have busted and, it. And then my grandmother, who never said a word or did anything that wasn't by the clock. Yeah. She, she was the one who, uh, I don't think I have too much of that. Yeah. I mean, my <laughs> different, but 
um, but that was the one who was allowed in the family. Yeah. So you do need an ally yeah. somewhere in the lineage. Well, that's just an interesting. I mean, I'm sorry to jump on that. No. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a time when, when people are going to realize that it's important to have communities and yeah. and have a con community because it's only within a community you can really grow. Well, that's the problem I had this. Uh, I went up north to Monterey and went to the Monterey Aquarium a couple of times, had a great time. But there was this family at the, the B and B we were at. And the mother was at the aquarium. She was so overweight, she needed a, a wheelchair. She was that overweight. But in the, it, when she came in, brought her daughters in, she had a maybe a one and a half, maybe a two, maybe a three and a half, no, maybe a three, a two and a one. And I watched the two-year-old walk in. I said to Ursula, that's way too much hair for a two-year-old. These kids were all dressed up identical with makeup, one, two, and three. Makeup, hair, Ribbons, bows, matching Ew. bows, immaculate, and they would sit. And the mother would lecture them about utensils and things while they were at the breakfast table. Oh. And the mother would go over there and stand and make plates. And the three-year-old's job was to deliver the plates. To, then the father would show up oh. later uh, and be complicit but not say anything. Oh. And um, you wanted to go over and say, "Lady, that's way too much hair for a two-year-old." You can't have hair made up like that <laughs> for a two-year-old, yeah. you know. And they got to be able to wear their little princess outfits and whatever, well, they whatever they want to put shut on. Up. I mean, I have yeah. a I have a niece, a grand niece, who changes her clothes forty times a day, and leaves everything all over the place. But she's finding out who, she's a, she's not her best friends are like, you know, she's she grew as a result of not being confined. But yeah. this, but so, anyways, here's my point. I wanted to walk up to that lady and say. That's too much hair for a two-year-old. What are you doing? How come all these three girls are, 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 are all dressed? In, but you're right. <laughs> See, it's the family is a cell. It's not a community. In, in, in the Republic, that woman would be sent, you know, those children would be immediately taken away. That woman would be sent away to the worst of hell, you know, and, and because she's not contributing to the, the welfare of the state by raising an insular problem. Yeah. But you could have gone to her and said that. Yes, <laughs> right. uh, not in our culture. Yes, you I've could. Been, I have enough people gunning for me as it is. Gunning for you? Yeah. Oh, <coughs> I think you're oh. I, I, I took I off the entire Delmar High School and told them that they were absolutely bankrupt. Well, I don't know about that. But and, and when I see mothers behaving improperly with their children, I say things in public. Like, and they say it's none of your business, and I say it's all my business. As long as you're in front of me, it's my business. Yeah, well, I shouldn't. Have done that, but I didn't. I, but I had. Yeah. Yeah, really so go hide yourself. But weren't you kind of shocked? Yeah. It was shocking that woman. But it was like that. It was. I want to stop now. But it was that insular idea. That the family is not a. I actually, I was standing in line with, with Julie once at a mother. I know that picture. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great picture. Wow. But we were standing in mother with Julie checking out once, and there was there was a, a mother there was a mother there with a young child in uh, one of these ribbon I think I was girl a little princesses thinner. in the shopping cart, and she was she was just raising a fit, and uh, Julie, it was just it was. To, I don't know. to my mind, it was pure excellence watching you deal with that. Yeah. She leans into the kid and says, Oh, what a beautiful actress you are. I'll bet nobody knows that you're so good at acting. Yeah. And this girl just stopped and went... <laughs> yeah, sure. She broke it. She broke it. She broke it. It was beautiful. She broke like, just give her a little you're doubt. You're good at that. You'll be oh, good at acting wrong. someday. Right? <laughs> Called her on it right there, but in this most diplomatic way. And the See, mother didn't the do anything. The mother just kind of looked to the right and then went back signing. See, David, if you're ever going to do that, I recommend that you talk to the child, not to the parent. Mm -hmm. You go oh. to the child and yeah. you say, no, hey, what do you think? Do you there, like there your are, hair that way? Do you there like are your restrictions hair about oh, yeah. people addressing children in our culture. Yeah, they can go crazy. It's, it's That's true. true. That's true. Yeah. When I was in New York, but I think it makes more uh, sense, but like that. Yeah. The culture, the street culture. 
and we moved all over New York, see. So therefore, we'd move in an area that was predominantly Italian, Irish, Jewish. Well, we moved around. When I hit the Irish culture, it was like, what? And the following universal principles were accepted by all Irish people. You never tell anybody anything about what's going on in your family. Number one, if anyone in any way calls your mother a name, it is your duty to fight <laughs> to your death. So then, if someone comes from an area where uh, Afro-Americans are, the common word there is motherfucker. <laughs> if that language Your is used... Your mom is so fat that... <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that word is Your used mom. among the Irish, it's war. Yeah. I mean, it's war. Oh, Joe, I'm going to take a photo of the photo. Okay. Yeah. In the Jewish area, avoid conflict. all conflict. Mm. Oh, the Jewish. There, therefore, when kids form gangs, uh, that was the Saturday, usually Saturday morning. You'd go gang, go fight different Italian, you know, right? So there are different hierarchies. Therefore, if you really decided to have your street battle with Jews, it was a winner. Didn't count much because they were taught, go home quick, get the hell out of there. Right? Italian. Watch out, because they'll find a way to get even with you. One way or the other, they'll figure out who's the ringleader and they'll, right? So each one had its own way of being. Like community pathologists. It's really a great place to live. What was it like for you, since you were in any one of these, right? To move oh, well, well, I hate to tell you the truth, but... Uh, my first name is Pierre. Yeah. And what does that mean? There was an French French. What does that mean? A stupid question. I mean, I know it means right. Pierre must have been difficult. There's no French neighborhood. You have no status. I try to tell him, but my father was Irish American. Didn't work. Pierre was the lowest name on the list. Debbie. So in that in my days in, with the Irish group, I was Peter. They refused, absolutely refused to ever use that name. Mark. So I was in great neighborhoods. Yeah, and there's consequences. Oh yeah. And Each one had their own particular consequences. Can we can we develop the analogy you put forward a little bit more earlier? Which one? The enlightenment is to pathologos as practice is to daydreams. Oh. Isn't uh, that how you put it? Uh, uh, yes, but that means that uh, uh, as in as enlightenment needs practice to endure. So the pathologos needs daydreams to endure. Right. Yes. So it's pathologos is to daydreams as enlightenment is to practice. Yeah, but you can. There are no daydreams that the figure in the daydream is not a pathologos figure. Okay. Um. Right. That's why when you study daydreams, you don't have to go into the drama. I never do. Don't need to do it. All you have to do is say, hey, what's the original figure? Oh, how does that relate to your dreams? You'll see the dream will play out the image in the daydream. So then analogously, if uh, you're looking for the pathologos image in the daydream, it, nat it naturally arises in the daydream for you yeah. to reflect on. So in the practice, too, there is something of the enlightenment 
that, that has naturally to be, arises in that the That has classroom. to be, that, see, the difference between the two is one can be deepened, the other cannot. There's no growth in the path logos, it's static. <laughs> the teacher does not get more profound. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> there it is, there it is. <laughs> if your book doesn't include these jokes, you're losing out. Really, it's really pretty clear, yeah. So, <laughs> How, look here, for any of you that, that's involved in any kind of spiritual practice like Buddhism, how often have you heard the Roshi say you have to continue your practice? That's all there is. That's all they say. Why? Why? Because it will diminish over time. The impact will diminish over time since it's in competition with the Pathologos. Pathologos is going to survive nearly all enlightenment experiences. Yeah, but see, I'm confused because a couple of weeks ago, you poo-pooed meditation. It's a, it's that was a mistake. <laughs> now, go ahead. The one mistake. Everything is a meditation. Every <laughs> fantasy is a meditation. Well, that is what you said, but we didn't... But you, you said you never meditate. So, well, that's because of my own peculiar nature. I'm trying to grasp what it means to practice in this analogy. And given that meditation is kind of off the table, or I don't know what... No, no, is this is... Um, uh, this comes under the word recollection. Why recollection? So you're recollecting that enlightenment yeah. state yeah. in order to deepen it. Yeah. But why isn't that called meditation? I don't know. I never made up the term. Well, no, I don't mean it as an issue of names, but isn't a practice of recollection that concentrated focus that is the hallmark of meditation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People don't like the word recollection because that means you're using your mind. So you use the word meditation and that that means some kind of thing you're going to be doing habitually and without mind. Oh, I see. It's the role of mind or not. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Like yoga. Everybody's into yoga. That's bullshit. I know what's into yoga. Yoga's using the mind. It's one thing they don't teach, that's all. It's all calisthenics. Hey, how to bend this way and that way. Awareness, gotta develop your awareness. <laughs> Ever see someone without any? Ever see anyone short of it? So they got all of these great slogans. They're not, they don't make a damn thing. Intelligence. Yeah like intelligence. Hmm. So somebody could lack some. Well. Wow. Just uh, no, I don't want to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that while we're here, we have mind. Uh, have the opportunity for mind. <clears throat> for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we also have amnesia. Amnesia. Okay. Must have it. Okay. Every pathologos okay, is ahead. an experience of amnesia. Okay. You forget what came before. Mm. And you block what's coming. That's amnesia. Okay, so yeah. we have mind, but we have amnesia. We have a little work to do while we're here, recollecting. But when we go to Hades... When you what? When you go to Hades... Uh, you don't go to Hades. Or... <laughs> Did you hear his answer? Yeah. We don't go to Hades. Okay, so pardon my. Uh, That's okay. That's just, we're just purifying language. It may not make any difference. Let's just say when we when we die, um, is it is, is, the Homeric vision is that we don't have mind wherever it is that we go, 
Does Homer, or for that matter, Plato, talk at all, at all about lifting of that amnesia when you die? Well, you see, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, see, amnesia plays a role in the reincarnation. You are said to pass through the river of forgetfulness, right? That is, we come into the world without any knowledge of our former existences. Why is that important? Are, are you, when you say, why is that important, are you asking, why is an, why, how does amnesia function? Yeah. That's a central, that's, that's, a, a, yeah, that's, that's a central issue. Even though there are all kinds of evidence from kids who are able to recall their former existences. Well documented. And, and people who get out of body no. are able to do it to some degree also. No. No. Um, what would we, how would we function in... With mind? Uh, if, we if we were living as we are now, but we in the in the physical body, but we could remember easily all previous lives, what would be different? Uh. Oh, I don't. I I really don't know, uh, because the assumption is that it's your present existence is cumulative, and therefore, what's the point in learning about one's past? You might not repeat the same mistakes if you could remember them. But if you may not repeat the same mistakes, that means you must learn to uncover them in the present, ah, which is why you're that's here. True. That's true. But does Homer or Plato, other than, are we talking, other than that, do they talk about Uh, that veil of amnesia lifting when you die? Do it again. Do they, I'm using my own words. That's but, okay. Do they, does Homer or Plato or anyone else in the Hellenic tradition, for that matter, talk about uh, maybe using the metaphor you were using, passing back through that river of forgetfulness when you die and, and remembering everything again? For instance, I remember you talking to me once about at Esalen. How like about how dreams... This way is forgetfulness, this way is remembering. Pardon me? No, I'm uh, sorry. Right? I was just following his image. Yes. Crossing the river Alethe, the right? Yes. Alethe, is to forget. And he was suggesting you cross the other way, you remember. Yes. But what do you want to remember it for? I mean, you're bringing, the, you're bringing the totality of your experience, all of them, in the present. Okay, might be not. Hey. I've known people, uh, you may not have ever met them, but they're people they call tourists, and they visit different countries. <laughs> Rather curious. Right? Have you ever, ever, have you ever heard of them? We're getting very personal, but what's oh. your point? <laughs> <laughs> Having owned property in various countries around the world. Go ahead. But we're people. Yeah, but they I'm, don't not talking, have any, I'm not talking about looking at past yeah, go ahead, go ahead. as a tourist. Excuse me? Um, like we already talked about um, how the child uh, nurses can even detect a difference in each newborn. You're bringing the pathologos with you. So I'm thinking if I could know past lives, I could perhaps get insight into where my pathologos came from that I brought with me. Yeah, okay, that'd be like a tourist. Yeah, go ahead. How so? Well, a tourist is going to move from place to place and it's not going to make any difference to them. So They'll be around different cultures, so what? No, but knowing how is it... Where does, my, where does a, any pathologus that I bring with me come from? You mean you want to trace all of its roots? Yeah. Okay, that's one way of looking at life. 
Whether or not that will help you get out of the present one is another issue. Whether you might want to understand that? It's not enough to re-experience the path of Logos to get out of it. So you go back and you find all the ways in which you develop whatever it is you have in the present. So what? Of course not. But even when we look at um, our uh, past scenes in the present life, it sheds a lot of light and understanding on, on uh, and we keep looking at it and, and looking at it from different angles, those past scenes. Well, if some past scenes were coming from previous lives, why not look at those in the same way that we look at past scenes from our present life? Probably just did it worse. It's the same question. Wherever you go, if you, wherever you go, uh, and in whatever you experience, you want to know what it is that is being the experiencer, and its effect upon you, the experiencer. So uh, you got it all here. Like, is the issue? How can we have it all here? If what? How can you? Well, it is all here. Like, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Have you ever been to a Friday night? Oh, good, good. Is it possible that you've had a dream of you? Yes. Oh. What would happen to all the members of your family if they reviewed that dream review you had last night? Uh, we'd have a scene on our hands. What will they do to them? It would upset them. Not enough. Upset them. Because why? It's just a dream. It's just a talking about a dream. What's so, so hot about talking about dreams? Well, first of all, they're going to have to experience a, a, a lot of discomfort with how they raised me in ignorance. I mean, the best of intentions, but ignorantly. Yeah, uh, would that benefit them or not? Um, it might not. It might not. I was going to say only if they do something with it. Oh, only if they're willing to what? Look at it and, and see where it goes. Oh, use their mind. Yes. And if not, they're like a tourist. They have yet to use their mind. They have yet to found their home. Tourists don't have a home. They escape it. So can we use our mind when looking at previous lives? Were you looking at the dream last night? What was that like? Um, wonderful, just seeing, just enjoying seeing. Um, what is it about you that you found seeing wonderful and worthwhile, but you think that if you were to show and share that dream with your family members, they would not? What is it about me? That uh, I'm not sure I follow the question. Would they have to have your background that you've developed in order to see the significance of what you found significant? What does it take to see? What does it take to see? Now, what did it take you to see? Courage, persistence, um, a lot some of re degree rewards from previous seeing and remembering those rewards and wanting more of them. And the literature you've been into, and the talks you've been into, how important have they been? Crucial. Yeah. So they'll only learn what you learned if they match your learning. Yeah. How important is that learning? We're all here for at least yeah. in this circle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Ja. Curious, isn't it? Yeah, but unless I'm like, could they have ever guessed it? That answers my Could your family have ever guessed it? No. No. Yet it's available. Everything that you went through is available. All the literature is available. What does it take? You said courage. Uh, it takes also, a, um, at least for me, it has take a li uh, taken a lifelong search for answers. Mm-hmm. And being not content with... Yeah. Now, can you use what you just said back to your question? How important would it be then to re-experience past lives without okay, without saying, that kind of saying? Well, oh, without? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying without. I, absolutely, using the mind. But why not look at those? Not just tourists. Oh, that's that's a beautiful place. But or re-experience it as yourself. Certainly, people do that too. But I'm saying. If you take, I guess we're saying the same thing, if you take the questioning with you, yeah. then that would be a value. Yes. Yeah. So it isn't just re-experiencing no, past absolutely. reincarnations, that would help. No, no, no. That would be like being a tourist. But my original, so we agree on this. Only valuable if you're bringing mind with you and, and questioning, looking at those scenes, whether from this life or a previous life. But I'm interested in knowing if Homer or Plato or any of the other Hellenes talk about one of the things happening at death is that your memory comes back to you of all previous lives. Like, you and I were talking at Esalen at, in the lodge once, and you were making a nice analogy between dreams and lives, if I remember correctly anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. And you were saying, you notice how when you're in a dream, um, you rarely, if ever, remember previous dreams while you're in that dream. You have sort of a, a myopia, right? You're only looking at this world. But there's several of these, and there's a whole line of these dreams, right? That's right. It's only when we wake up out of that dream that we can look down upon all of them and find uh, patterns across them. That's right. And the same thing with lives. When we, when we die, we can then look at another higher level across all the lives. If you have the mind. Is, if, that would be using mind, right? But the question is, Suppose someone were to come up to you and say, hey, I understand you're going to do, uh, take a look at all your past lives. You'd say, oh, yeah, because I got the mind now to see. Suppose they were to say, well, why don't you use it now to discover what you don't know? Clearly, both. Can't have both if you do one or the other. Why not? I don't know. They're, they're different goals. If you looked at your past lives with the mind for seeing, yes. would that be equivalent to now using your mind to discover something important to you that you still do not know? No. Therefore? But could they complement each other, those lines of questioning? You know? How can they complement what they don't cover? There, look. Hey, go back to your third past reincarnation. Do you think you're going to be able to spot what you need to know now, then? If there's a past scene in there, perhaps that... that, that then, you're using, then you're using past scenes in the hope that you will discover something independent of it that you do not know now. something new about yourself 
Is that right? Yeah. And therefore, his journey back is not just to do a case history, but yeah. to continue his yeah. study of mind. Yeah. I hate to cut you off. Yeah, no, no, it's not cutting me off. But in the most positive sense, by exploring your past lives and seeing something about the nature itself, because otherwise it would be what they call a prosopography, just a list of characters. Yeah, no, no. I mean, like if we, if 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 we find scenes in the present life that shed light on our problem, is it not also possible that we find scenes in previous lives that shed light on our problem? But you're saying that's not necessary, that everything that we need can be found in past scenes in this life only, will be reflected in those. And the, see, the question is whether or not having had prior existences is sharpening what you need to use when you use the mind. Is there any destiny in all of the past reincarnations? Is it, is it pointing, is it growing? Is there something valuable that is maturing over successive reincarnations that is essential for you to see what you most need to see in the present? Either past reincarnations are separate and distinct, they, they do not have any cumulative merit, or they do. If they do have some merit, then there must be something that's developing which is maturing and worthwhile developing. It's one or the other. Yeah. I would hope that it's... So let us hope that the, the latter is the case, yes. and therefore we are reincarnated now with the best opportunity for seeing, given our own past. Or we can close the, close down the door of philosophy and all of that, that and then continue blindly continuing, which is not a very nice picture. No. <laughs> no one knowing that would, <laughs> would want to. Any of you like like to return to <laughs> earlier well, form? Do it better. <laughs> but uh, I guess this has been an interesting discussion and helpful. But I'm still not feeling like I'm getting an answer to the original question. What I don't follow is your if you have your the result of your education and nurture when you're born into when you make your choice of this life. You have the result of that cumulative sack. Wait, 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 hold on a second, Barbara. I, I want to hear your question, but I I'm, I really would like to get my question yeah, but, answered but this first. Is, this is your question. What yeah, is, I think this is your question. Is there anything in Plato or Homer referring to the lifting of amnesia? When oh, you it's die? a yes or no question. Yeah. And if so, what? I don't, I've never seen anything like, like you're describing. The lifting of amnesia? Like the lifting of amnesia, so you see all of your past lives, was the question as it was originally put. And that's what he's agreeing to now. Yeah, no, I've never seen anything. And my, I've never seen anything like that. Okay. That's one of your questions, but you seem to be pursuing the other one, which is, is there any benefit to be gained by looking at your past lives? And that's where my line of questioning was at its origin, because I keep hearing you asking it, and I don't hear you referring back to the idea that what you have when you're born into this life is the cumulative result of, a, of your series of past lives. Your ignorance, as well as one assumes, whatever measure of mind you bring. But you don't so, hear me say, agree I don't that? hear you using that. Because it seems to me, if you use the idea that what you bring here is the result of an education and nurture that you've passed through, achieved, by passing through many past lives, then what you have to work with now is the distillation, is the, the basic component of the ignorance that you need to dispel yourself of. And to go backwards is to pick up, Pierre was calling it independent of. And in one sense, it is independent of. You're, if you go back into a past life, so maybe I should just stop before I got to that last point and ask you whether, it, in, in what I've said, can you find a reason to disagree that what you have now in your fantasies and your dreams is the result of what you were born into and what you've experienced now? Well, I guess I've stated it a few times, but it's not satisfying you or anybody else here, I guess, um, or some people. Well, we don't see the results of... What I've stated is that if 
uh, you mentioned fantasies and dreams that we that we have to work with absolutely and I agree completely with cumulativity and I can see the independence in the way that you use the word is used but the question I'm saying is I'm asking is if we can look at past scenes in our present life and get uh, insight out of them, which is part of what we look at, not just dreams and but you're not fantasies. The That's midwife, right? Okay, so go ahead. I'm missing something. Where are you then? going from there? You've asked us not you, can, can we use the same? Can we not? Can but we all, why, not also look at other things? Yeah, but if it's cumulative and to that degree it is um, condensing, condensing, right? There's nothing extraneous in your present fantasies, daydreams, and midwifery <coughs> explorations of your past. There's nothing extraneous. You're dealing with only I what is that. blocking you now. Yes. Okay, so let's say you, so I can't see what the benefit would be, because also here you have the milieu in which you learned, which you learned, as well as the, the loyalty issues, as well as the blocks to going in another direction. You have everything that you're engaged with now. And if you go into the past scene, you're bringing in components that are not in the present. That are not, that maybe you've already dealt with, you've already seen through, because you have no concept, of, I, I assume, of how that relates to your present. Because of the independence. You know, it's interesting, I can see that, but I, I, also, the, the, I, I also, there's a part of me that says, well then why do we look at past scenes in this life? Everything that we're doing right now in this moment could reflect. Is it related? Forget. Could reflect, look, sorry. Reflect could reflect what? whatever problems we're having. Uh, why do we need to go back to when we were two and a half? Because then you understand the origin. Well, that's the same thing I'm saying. Not exactly. Maybe there's no, an origin I, in a previous I, I, I see your point. It's like, if I can try to state it as an analogy, just as <clears throat> whatever problem state arises, we look at patterns, previous problem situations and also try to get to the origin the pathologos transmission so also I think you're arguing why don't we given a problem <coughs> statement now we look through not only this life <coughs> but other lives for the pattern of that problem situation arising and look for one or more origins of that in other lives I think that would be yes. your analogous. What to pour up? Well, yeah. we have to be using more value. Well, but could we just explore that analogy though? Like, if if on if on one side of it we do it, what right. to pour up? We do it. This what is, the Italian is version what, of so what what argument is there for not doing it in a more expansive sense? If you have everything you need microcosmically, why would you go Well, yes, I mean, if, if, if that is assumed to be true, but I don't think that's, that, ex, that, I don't think that assumption is quite granted, because if in this life we're interested in the origins, why not are we also interested in the origins in multiple lives? That we were born in, like, if you put it in the way of, if we're born in with a pathologos, why don't we look at the origin of that pathologos that we're born into, which wouldn't be in this life? Then there might be a reason. But I don't that's, hear that being said. What, yeah. Well, if we assume that they're independent, but if if it is, if what do you there mean is, we uh, no, I mean we're born in with a pathologos, yeah. then that pathologos can't have its origin in this life. That's an obvious. Thing. Right. It's, so it would, it could be from a previous life. That's what I was saying. Yeah. If someone put it that way then I could understand some benefit to it. But if, for myself, see, and, and, and again, I guess it's the window idea. If when you die, you, you get an experience of all your past lives, then in that moment, I'm going to pursue the question of where this pathologos arose? Or am I taking it too narrowly and just assume that one could do a yogic practice and achieve the state of remembering all one's past lives? And then I would go into it, and you're assuming the mind could trace down the source of the pathologos that I was born into in the past lives and find an origin. And That's you're asking saying. whether you, that would be a benefit. Do, could you do midwifery across lives? For the sake of the pathologos you were born into? Yes. Yes, that's the cumulativity. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's not exactly the cumulative. Um, one of the problems, it's kind of a moot point in a way. There have been many people who have come to this group and left this group, who I call past lifers. <laughs> people who know how to get in touch with their past lives. Ah. Most of us don't have that ability. Mm. And I'm of, often very dismissive of people who are past lifers because I ain't got the time to develop that skill. It's something people seem to be born with. The, the question of mm. pursuing past lives meaningfully is only, is, is, is kind of a parlor game in a mm. way. And I think it's in, just going to be good in the sense that there's enough information here to. And with what we've developed as a whole, you know, the, the great tradition of thought, that if you can nail down your path logos here, you might be able to find a few heroes in the past who have distilled the kernel down to the very essence of your problems. But we don't, I don't, it's, it's sure. hard work. It's a parlor game. Oh, okay. Castle lives are a parlor game. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm done with this conversation. Oh, look here. <laughs> I, I, let me suggest something. <laughs> um, Sorry. Someone came up to me when I was teaching at Golden West College, yeah. which is a local college, <laughs> Golden it is. And they discovered that I officially have a credential that allows me to teach mathematics. Whoa. Yeah. Hmm. So he came up to me and he said, I really want to study mathematics and I want to do it right. So I gave him the task. I said, I want you therefore in your study of mathematics to go back all the way to your beginning of mathematics and discover all of the mistakes you've ever made. And we'll look at each one of them. That's the way to study mathematics. So we could go back and find the Yeah, go back in time to discover each of the mistakes he made because it's important to, to focus on the mistakes you made. As, uh, uh, would that mean that they weren't no. being repeated? No. What do you mean, no? no? I was wasting my time. Was that an FTE? Did you get paid for that? Well, I want to tell you that Gene got very upset at this because he said that is not the usual way. And I said, no, 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 because I know some people are doing this very thing with reincarnation. They're going back to discover all the mistakes they made. Okay. And in that way, they're really going to know themselves. So he then thought for a while, and he said, you're right. So I went back to the kid, and he refused to go any further. <laughs> you put it in a much more pleasant way than I just So the, con the, the conclusion would be, though, then, that if, if we could explore all our pathologos presently, in, in this present life, there would be nothing left to explore if you went back to other lives. Everything would be so. The kid didn't want to go back wheel, because he said, "I now I see how foolish it is. It bo really bothered me, and I don't think I should reveal it." Well, what did he say was foolish about it? I don't think I should reveal I it. I think you should. You think, I, think I should it might anyhow? Advance the point. Yes. yes. He said it's very stupid to do that because all I really want to know is how and why I made mistakes. That can happen today. Yeah. In the general or in the particular? I did, he said, I just want to know why it is I made mistakes, plural. Would you tell him? Mm. Therefore, he refused to go on with his study of mine. He didn't need to do math. Right. Nope. <laughs> mm. Dumb kid. Well, that's true. He didn't need to do Had a good subject, good student. Could have had him go all the way back and discover all the mistakes he made. What does he want to do? He wants to know why he made mistakes in the first place. What a dumb kid. Tell him to go do a couple of problems right now. Oh. <laughs> Forget what she said. Which is what we were all thinking, by the way. So Yeah, good job. <laughs> <cat. laughs> well, then we should not look at uh, past scenes. Oh, I didn't say don't look at them. If you're fortunate enough to go back and take a look at something, come back and let us know what you learned. I guess I'm so... If you can do it. Yeah, well, we can should can encourage him. Yeah, yeah right? no. Go! If you can do it, do it. Yeah. And then come back and that's tell a us different if you response, learned anything. Wow. And try to discover why you made the mistake. No, see, that's pushing it further. 
But that's what, what it's at. You want to find the source Otherwise, of your ignorance. Of that's yeah. a mistake. Right? That's all. So that is what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But you've just changed it. You're saying midwifery and looking at patterns in this life. So you're no longer talking about the, right. the, the, the history of past lives. No, that's right. Yeah, and, respond and, and and I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm saying we have to some degree regress in time, even if it's just within this life. Yeah. We can't just stay with the present moment, can we? No, we, we look for origins in our past scenes in the present life. Oh, just, wait a minute. You're making... Just expanding it. Are there past scenes elsewhere that we can also look at? I don't see hold it, there's hold something... It. I think you're missing a point. Why don't you spend your time now on all the mistakes you made in this life and why you made them did as you, a preparation for doing the reincarnation to, so trip? Why did you tell this kid to restrict his, uh, his review of mistakes to only the last year? Yeah. No, it wasn't the last year, the whole, his life. His whole life. All yes, the but I'm made. drawing an analogy. I'm saying... All right, if we're going to restrict only to this life and not to previous lives, if we're looking for... It'll give you practice, scenes, you see, so that when you do that, you'll be able to do it with great, great skill. Yeah, like how many, how many problem, scenes do you have to, problem scenes do you have to look at to start understanding why you have a problem? That I don't know. See, we don't look I at all of our whole childhood. We don't look at our whole childhood. Going at certain particular scenes. But those would be the mistakes, wouldn't they? So if you did all your present and you thought you've exhausted everything you could find out from well, this lifetime, right. you know, maybe maybe then there might be a case for going back. But Pierre's <laughs> challenging you that finish this one first. To get all you can out of this lifetime first. And then if you're still left over, you have some leftovers. So it would Go be, to somebody it would be the back. yes, it would be the practice of recollection by heaven. Yeah. Oh. Well. But what's what important some, is that really if uh, what Pierre says is that you have to set a meaningful goal, the most meaningful uh, goal. If you don't do that, then you remain ignorant of those problems that more than likely occurred many lifetimes and will continue. And you won't be able to see that. the patterns at all. You have that opportunity right now. So you can do that at any given moment. So it's, it's your, it's, well, I, I wonder about. That's a very good point. So, uh, um, so, okay, so this, but that goes back to maybe what we were talking about earlier. Well, okay, so let me let me directly confront something that you said here, and, and then maybe this is where it will come together for me. Um, if we don't if we don't pursue a goal, it may be that we remain ignorant of something. The right? most meaningful. The goals. most meaningful, right? Um, is it possible that that there are You've probably already said this, but I'm just coming around. Is it possible that there are just things in past lives, the pathologus we bring with us at birth, that we have not yet, that have not yet reflected themselves in the current life? To put it in the opposite. You mean there's a role of forgetfulness inherent in the nature of reality? I dare say that would be peculiar. Interesting. Well, let, let me throw something that's been on my mind for a few minutes uh, that caught me. Um, I, I don't know when this occurred, but uh, uh, if I were to give a probable date of it, uh, I keep forgetting how old I am. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that. Don't know. Anyhow, uh, it was a few years ago. <laughs> I had an interesting dream, and uh, it had one very clear statement. 
Um, you're going to have to take midwifery with you to help those in Hades. So like I got a job. <laughs> Already. <laughs> right? What does it pay? Got a job. But you didn't have to go far to find Hades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Okay. You got it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Fun. much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh wait. Thank you. Hey. I like Could, your comment. We need we need your help. We need to know who this gentleman is. Do you know? Somebody needs to point this. The guy behind me? He's a, guy behind you. Guy, he? He's a monk. He was a monk at the He was a monk. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. monk. Mountain Zen. Okay. And which are you in there, David? No. No, I'm not no. there. You're here. <laughs> Do we know these people or were they in our group or was it the I know Joe, but from here, this guy, Barbara. this guy, this guy, and this guy, I don't know. I guess again I didn't say So we have Debbie James. Oh that'd be Debbie James.